Hello world, let's get down to business. It's been a little while since my last video, admittedly, but with my mental state a little less in the gutter, we're finally back in action with Apex Legends' latest community comic. Courtesy of the wonderfully talented Von Holder, with a super complicated theory surrounding Bangalore and Wraith coming up from it, and a whole bucket load of juicy tension to start us off. Approaching drop zone. Dropping soon, folks. So grab your socks and... You know, uh, uh, that's it, really. Wraith, grab my jump jets from my footlocker. Left side. Copy that. Bangalore. What's this? My knife? It's my knife. Jump jet's right there. This is a pilot's knife. Who gave you this? A pilot. I don't have time for this. Is this a data knife? I mean, what intel's on it? It's not a data knife. I checked. Now give it to me. But maybe you didn't do it right. I was a pilot. I can probably figure it out. Give me my knife, Renee. It's not yours. It's some pilot's. Let me hang on to it for... <laughs> you are not taking anything else from me. <sighs> what? Okay, whoa, 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 whoa there. Okay, this isn't a playground. All right, this is a... Get ready for the playground. Ground. I mean, besides, who fights in a dropship? <sighs> yeah, really. Drop zone ahead. Prepare for your jump. Kaja. Pardon me, ladies. I got a jump to master. Knuckle draggers. Idiots. Here. Take your knife. I just thought I might be able to find intel to help us both. In my past, and your brother Jackson. No one gets to say his name. Especially you. I'm sorry if I crossed a line, but is there something just that I- Just drop it. Let's jump and get this over with. It's private, and I get it, but if we're gonna fight together, I want to clear the air. Don't worry, Headcase. I haven't stabbed you in the back yet. Why start now? So, as we can see, Wraith discovers Bang's pilot knife and raises the possibility that it's a data knife, which likely means that it is, that it has info on it that we want, and that it likely belonged to a pilot that we'd be aware of. Then, Bangalore seems to hold Wraith personally responsible for her current situation, insisting she won't let her take anything else away from her, and that Wraith particularly has no right to say Jackson's name, the brother that Bangalore lost contact with in a ship explosion several years ago. Now, this comic not only goes to show Wraith's determined yearning for self-understanding and Bang's bitter attitude to her own past, but it also develops on one of her core themes from Pathfinder's Quest with Bangalore's bias against the Ares Division reflecting her own hatred for how others would tar all the people of the IMC with the same bad guy brush. And so, why she hates the Ares Division and Wraith specifically may not be so apparent if you haven't read Pathfinder's Quest. So, first I'm going to give you some super condensed information mainly from Bangalore and Wraith's chapters, and then I'll explain why I think all of that is actually pretty important and pretty relevant to the comic at hand. So, Bangalore and Jackson were the closest Williams siblings, treated by most as twins, with Jackson being just a year older than Anita. Then, in 2715, 19 years before the present day, 2734, just before starting their own basic training, Bangalore and Jackson lost their older brother Zeke to the explosion on Typhon, where he had been working on the Ark as part of the Ares Division to further the IMC's effort in the Frontier War. And before this, Zeke himself had missed out on the special Williams family shipping out tradition due to his hussy-ass girlfriend Caitlin, and so never got his own family bottle cap bracelet, as we see on Bangalore's heirloom. Bangalore herself also broke Caitlyn's jaw for daring to show up at Zeke's funeral with her new man in tow. Bitch got what she deserved. Trust me, that is important. Later then, that same year, 2715, in the Frontier War's final battle at Gridiron, Jackson and the Ares Division used remnants of the Ark from Typhon to power their escape from the militia fleet jumping the spaceship the IMS Hestia to the Outlands in the space of a year when it should have taken them 20. Bangalore was then incredibly upset by their running away as she felt that the Ark would have allowed them to turn the tide of the declining war. 
and their jump across space-time also sent a form of like an EMP travelling through space in their wake, disabling communications between the main body of the frontier and the Outlands, and then even within the Outlands themselves by 2720, five years after the Hestia's initial jump. And then, during the several years, not months as we were originally told, that they wandered the Outlands on board the IMS Hestia, Bangalore learned the sinister truth about Ares Division and the planet-destroying capabilities of the Fold Weapon from Jackson after he became close with an unnamed Ares Division doctor. My tone should indicate that's important too, right? Then, later on, in orbit over the planet Solis, a grenade on the ship's outer hull tore Bangalore from her brother, which, as we know, led her to the Apex Games. Timeline-wise, this incident was originally stated to be three years ago, but was then retconned to months after the Battle of Gridiron. But this is now also seemingly false, as Bangalore tells her that IMS Hestia wandered the Outlands for years following that escape. Bangalore also seems to indicate, when she talks about the Blackout, that she was able to contact other Syndicate planets than Solis, she names Gaia, Samathi and Talos specifically, through this older technology once the blackout hit, which hints to me that she was on Solace at the time where the ship crashed. So the ship may have crashed by this point of 2720, or may have even crashed even earlier in 2719 when Gibraltar tells us in his chapter that the IMC supposedly left Solace. And then, with all that in mind, I would please invite you to remember that Wraith was a senior science pilot for the Ares Division, who went on to co-found and lead Project Wraith, which used remnants of the discovery from Typhon, i.e. the Ark, a substance that can warp matter and space-time, to achieve interdimensional travel. It should also be noted that Project Wraith was founded on Solace, with Wraith at the time claiming her residence to be in Solace City, but we know that her actual home planet was Typhon, the original location of the Ark, a 20-year space jump away. Project Wraith's labs were also then abandoned at least 10 years ago, so 2724, when Watson explored them as a child in her chapter, which fits our sort of timeline of 2720 being when the ship went down. And finally, our Wraith and Voidwalker swapped dimensions seven years before the present day, back in 2727. And Wraith tells us in her chapter that she doesn't feel that the name Renee really means anything to her. So that's a whole bunch of just like sporadic information, right? What does it all mean? I mean, by now, hopefully you've seen the video title. You better know where I'm going with this right now. Voidwalker, having lost her home planet of Typhon, and ending up on the IMS Hestia, escaping the frontier to the Outlands, ending up on Solace, has to have become the doctor on board the IMS Hestia that Jackson grew close to over many years. And it is Voidwalker's actions involving either the Ark Fragment or the Hull Grenade that led to Bangalore and Jackson being separated with Bangalore even seeing Voidwalker as the very same hussy-ass girlfriend and Ares Division scumminess that took Zeke from her and her brother in the first place, having happened to Jackson as well. And then, why does Voidwalker, the ex-pilot, not have a pilot knife? Kieto is evidently a company that makes knives for the public, rather than being a form of military issue, so perhaps Voidwalker had her kunai made as a replacement for something she once lost, and Bangalore's pilot knife once belonged to senior science pilot Dr. René Blasé, a name that our Wraith doesn't feel really applies to her. This might even explain why Wraith has such an intense emotional fixation on the knife itself. It's not just any route to her past that she might cling to in such a manner still, but she could even subconsciously remember the knife even from her alternate self as Voidwalker. Although, that all said, this could all obviously mean that the knife actually belonged to Dr. Amir Singh, 
Given his initial suspicions of the Ares Division, the fact that someone shared secrets with Jackson, and Singh's potential older age than Voidwalker, fitting the ship explosion timeline of 2720-ish better, like Wraith would have been 18 at the time, that might have been a bit of a weird situation, but either way, Bangalore, now knowing this nice history, should also likely lead to what we've seen. Her holding back some of her anger towards Wraith because she isn't exactly Voidwalker or Singh, who this knife originally belonged to, and as no like monolith, the Ares division truly represents the individual, that's part of Bangalore's whole shtick, but she ultimately still isn't able to truly separate Renee out from her own trauma of losing her brother. With this final line of, haven't stabbed you in the back yet, potentially being a direct quote from Voidwalker, who we know from other media that she was uh, ill-tempered, to put it lightly, that was directed at Bangalore initially, now being spat back in Wraith's face. Like, there is a lot to learn from these two ladies coming up, and I'm pretty convinced they're going to use this more personal drama between these two to set us up with progression into the future. With Bangs becoming able to forgive Wraith by the end of this arc, and herself, which will allow her to let people past her reflections of trauma, which will allow her to connect to Loba better, which puts Bangalore herself a greater threat of Revenant, who we know has got some plans of his own coming up, but it also gives Wraith a very tangible ability to gain further context on herself from the knife. Again, it could be Dr. Singh's knife, and that still works. But there's then at least like less direct emotional involvement between the two characters of Bangalore and Wraith, which then makes Bang's bias against Ares Division feel less justified and less of sort of emotionally motivated, but maybe it's supposed to, to show the sort of flaws in that way of thinking. So uh, I think that's what we can say from here for now. I am super glad to see the community comics continuing, always glad to see them. Like, Von's gorgeous, like, paintbrushy style has kind of put the new chapter of Armageddon to absolute shame. I'll do a video on that tomorrow. And the stellar voice work and the subtle animations only augment her already brilliant artwork to give this piece some really tense atmosphere. I love the little touches, like Wraith's eyes changing back after she gets tackled, showing she's sort of understanding the situation isn't as bad as it maybe seems which shows that Bangalore maybe has some definite emotional conflict going on regarding tackling Wraith over the knife. We also get to see Bang's special armory, weapons that are very important to her. Her dry witty remarks are really fun. And I really like how Mirage calls Crypto out for fighting him in the dropship, like all the way back in season three. There's definitely something in the works for those two through this new comic as well, and the new Armageddon chapter, that will seemingly set us up for season nine's overtime comic. So, check back on the channel tomorrow for more on that nonsense, as that's all from me for today. Thanks for staying with me, friends. I hope you enjoyed my wild ramblings and that it all actually managed to come together to make something properly cohesive for you. With that, I've been Euclidean Vision, the emotional support. Take care of yourselves out there, teammates, and may the glorious light of Best Girl shine within you. Bye-bye.